People often ask us who we are. We're two brothers, born three years apart, who grew up in a small town called Marstown in New Jersey. I'm Chris, the pilot, and the oldest. I'm Jeff Mason. I'm the navigator. I've never really been into cars. I grew up racing bicycles, first BMX and then road bikes. I've always loved machines. From bikes to motorcycles to cars to boats and back to cars again. Our father was a stock car racer in the 60s and 70s. Though we didn't know our father, it's obvious that racing is in the genes. No matter what we're doing, we're always competitive. We love to compete. Despite living worlds apart from each other, I live in Venice, Italy, Jeff lives in Denver, Colorado, we've remained close. And through rallying together, we've only become more so. Rallying requires a lot of trust between driver and navigator. Maybe that comes easier because we're brothers. In the car, we're a team and it's all business. We're competitors. We work to be fast together. At the end of the stage, at the end of the race, we're brothers. And it's great to be there together. The idea to run La Carrera came from Kent Bain. Kent and his crew at Vintage Racing Services have been building and supporting Carrera cars for 30 years. He said if we were going to do just one road rally in our life, it had to be La Carrera. The reasons were simple. The chance to race on open roads, the beautiful Mexican scenery, and the wonderful Mexican people. Kent said, you will never feel more welcome anywhere than when you're racing La Carrera. Was right. La Carrera Panamericana is one of auto racing's most historic and longest running rallies. It can only be compared to races such as the Mille Miglia and the Targa Florio in Italy. Did you guys get here any earlier? <laughs> they saunter in, you know. <laughs> they're, uh, they're lining cars up to get them through scrutiny. So. It was first run in 1950 as a way to promote the newly completed Pan American Highway that crosses Mexico. From 50 to 54, the best drivers and teams from Europe and the Americas race La Carrera. Like all races of the day, it was dangerous and it claimed the lives of many drivers. In 1955, it was canceled for safety reasons. Now we wait in line, and we'll pull the car up to the red tent, and Victor will inspect the car, and hopefully we'll pass. In 1988, La Carrera was revived as a rally for vintage race cars, pre-1975 cars equipped with modern safety systems. Today, the modern rally races 3,000 kilometers over seven days from the south of Mexico to the north, from city to city. Over 100 teams participate each year. This year's race ran through Oaxaca, Veracruz, Mexico City, Querétaro, Morelia, Guanajuato, Zacatecas, and Durango. La Carrera is the ultimate road race. Last year, this year is so much easier. Right. So, but ultimately, ultimately, I mean, as you know, compared to last year, we, we knew what we were doing. I mean, just from the bureaucratic point of view, we knew you had to go here, there, 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 and yeah. it out. And uh, we got confirmation that we took a few hundred pounds of weight out of the car. Several hundred pounds. Yeah, which is great. With all the work we did over the winter, more horsepower, less weight. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah, that works. Why do we race a 1965 Volvo Amazon 122S? Because life's too short to race an ugly car. Beyond that, the Amazon is a strong, safe car with a good rally history and goes like hell. Zero, 
long. Right zero long. Left three, left three. Uh-oh, uh-oh! Fuck me! Went into the corner too hot, didn't make it around, went straight. Damaged the, damaged the steering box. And we don't have another one of those. The wheel was forced in a violent manner and it pulled the steering box away from the frame of the vehicle. And it, that, that large shunt essentially uh, broke the, the pinion gear in the steering box. So, we'll now see whether the car's drivable. And if the car's not drivable, this race is over for driving not cut out before it started. Yeah, I'll, I'll come find you. But Amazon 65 or older would be ideal. What's um, the oldest it could be? Uh, 62, I think, is when they first came out. Okay. Okay. All right, because we're networking with some with some friends and we'll see. If I'm always asking. I'm I'm asking also questions. Well, okay. Uh, All right. All right. I'm gonna go talk to Ann Howard. Ann Howard. Yeah. See Volvo Amazon steering box or older? Este Jeff, el del, el del Volvo tuvo un accidente y están buscando la caja de dirección de un Volvo 1965, ¿ya? 1965. Una pregunta: ¿Necesitan una pieza de un Volvo 65? Damaged our steering box for our Volvo. Just before the crash, I was struggling to keep up with the pace notes. Chris was driving faster than I could give him the information about the next turn. I should have told him to slow down. We came too fast into a left three, and we didn't make the turn. We put the nose of the Mescalero straight into the hillside. Immediately after the crash, uh, I was completely devastated. I mean, I just wanted to lay down and cry. I mean, in an instant, everything we had done up to that point, a year's worth of preparation, was put into jeopardy due to one mistake. If we cannot find a replacement, our race is over. Period. I cannot overstate how much of a challenge this is. We need to locate a solid 1965 Volvo Amazon 122S steering box in Mexico, where Volvos were never imported. We've got 15 hours to find a needle in a haystack and fix our car to be able to race tomorrow. We knew that what? There was one in Connecticut, one in Los Angeles, numerous in Europe, and possibly one in Mexico. We had many people offering to be on the next flight coming down to Mexico. But unfortunately, no one could get here in time. Uh, what can I say? We're spent uh, trying to figure out what to do. And the phone rang. Okay. Oh my God. It's all your, no? Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God. Six, uh, six hectares. I, I don't know how much. I think that's the most valuable part of the car. <laughs> <laughs> CS, CS. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Lo que necesitamos es que no se dañe nada cuando la quites. Nada, nada. Que no. No, no, 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 no. No,
owner of the yard and VW Restore heard from someone in Renee's Facebook group that we needed an Amazon steering box. With the help of Mexico, we literally found the needle in the haystack. Pedro agrees to pull the steering box out of the junker right away. Now all we need to do is get the part to Oaxaca. Tonight is the ceremonial start in the center of Oaxaca. Tim and James have made the Mescalero drivable so we can be there. We don't want to miss it and disappoint our sponsors and our fans. The best news is we found the steering box we need. It's on its way right now from Aquas Calientes, 10 hours away. It turns out the brother of our photographer's high school friend lives in Aguas Calientes and is willing to drive the part overnight to Oaxaca on his motorcycle. His name is Jorge. Julian said he absolutely loves the Carrera and is willing to drop everything, skip work, just to help us. So this is where we are. Our race is in the hands of people we've never met and who don't know us. People who have put a pause on their lives to get us to the starting line. Six hours ago we crashed. Two hours ago we found the part we need to repair the car. If everything goes right, in 12 hours we'll be racing. Jorge, our hero. Without Jorge, we would have not been on the starting line. Mick, what can you say about a guy who's willing to drop everything, call his boss, and say, I'm not coming in tomorrow, and maybe not even the next day, and get on a motorcycle and ride like hell through to the night to help two brothers that he's never met? There's this idea called the spirit of La Carrera. If a team needs help because of a crash or a mechanical problem, other teams will help them in any way they can. Carrera fans, like Jorge, are also part of this spirit and will help the teams in any way they can. Without his help, we couldn't have started the race, and all the work we had done for a year would have been lost. When we went to the Mescalero that morning before the start, Jorge was there. There were big smiles on everyone's faces. We'd done it. We were going racing. If this is not the spirit of the Carrera, I don't know what is. We had to hotwire the car in order to get it to restart, in order to make the last transit to Veracruz. And uh, we might get penalized because we came in under the time. We'll see. We'll see if they're lenient with us because uh, we had such a tough day. But uh, glad to be here for sure.
entry into Mexico City was awesome. This year was okay. Yeah, Phenomenal. because they, instead of just going in as this group, we went in single file, and um, the people were so crowded around the car. It was just like you were driving through. I was through afraid of running over people. You thought you were going to run over their toes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it really was just so pressed in. But it was so much fun. And then we got, when we got out, the tourists. I could never have that much honest interaction with everyday people. In the career, you can. And so you really get a sense of, you know, what the cultures are in different places. And, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a, a unique and, in some respects, privileged way of interacting with yeah. Mexico. Right. Now, aside from being able to drive like a maniac across the country. Um, <laughs> but you put that aside, it is a very interesting way. Hey. I know that was tough for you. You know, it, it, it happens, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have a timing chip that we give to the starter and they record the time and then we give the same timing chip to the control at the end. And that stage, the second to last stage, the roads were so rough that the timing chip bounced off the Velcro. So when we got to the control at the end, to record the time, the timing chip wasn't there. So I had to take everything off and I'm hunting around inside the car to find the timing chip because we got, we had to get to the next control on time and we made it like inside our minute. So, whew. And then we immediately had to go. And that was, that was tough. Scary, a little hairy. Well, we're this is why one of the reasons why we do the crew. We get to drive up mountain roads like this. So the morning stages were good. Nothing was easy. Nothing was easy. Um, and then in the afternoon, there's this um, stage that is a series of switchbacks, and it's like ten switchbacks. And it is just it is just so physically demanding and, and hard and mentally difficult. We've had problems with our fuel gauge, um, so that resulted in us carrying a little more, more fuel than we need. Um, that's something that needs to get resolved uh, this evening. But the speed stages were great. The road was in good condition. We kept the car on the road and we were really fast for us. Now how that's going to play out in the standings, I don't really know. It really doesn't matter. Today was a blast. We drove the car to its limit, our limit, and uh, tomorrow will be another day and we'll try to push it even harder. Over its 3,000 kilometers, La Carrera takes us through incredible Mexican landscapes. My favorite landscape is crossing Lake Huizio. It's like driving across the largest mirror you've ever seen. Truly spectacular.
When we first started working on doing the career, mm -hmm. one of the first people I got introduced to in the Carrera world um, was Angelica Fuentes. She's really, really nice. And one of the first things she said to me was, you're gonna love it and it's you're gonna learn about the spirit of La Carrera. And this is like two years ago. Well, nobody race. Nobody. There's no money to race for. There's no prize other than the pride of your own achievement, the pride of your own success, the pride of, and, and enjoying the experience. So everybody gets that, right? So they yeah. they want to make sure that somebody is able to continue, and if they can help you, they will. I mean, that's just it. Bottom line, if they can help you, will. Pretty overwhelming to kind of be on the receiving end yeah, of it, totally. um, because we're not, we're nobody in this <laughs> in this in this race, right? No, we're just the Mason brothers in the Volvo. Right, we're we're the guys in the Volvo. So. Hey, we're in third. It's a nice way to start the day. <laughs> we're in third overall. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, Chris drove great. Stages were amazing. Tough. I like all the career stuff. It's tough. This stuff is not easy, but um, we were able to push the car a little bit, push ourselves a little bit. Um, I think we're finally like really coming into our rhythm. Uh, driver and co-driver, you know, we only get to do this once a year, and so it takes a few days for us to just get in sync, uh, but today was that day, and uh, the Cumbre stages were just beautiful and fast and hard, a little bit scary, but we kept it together, and I think our, I think our times are pretty fast, so we're happy about that. It doesn't matter where we end up in the, in the results, but I know that uh, we pretty much drove it as fast as we could drive it. So, it was a great day overall. Oh, I had been told about the tunnels of Guanajuato, but I wasn't prepared for this. Tunnel after tunnel. Fortunately, we were following behind the Grillo's VW, but at a certain point, their navigator jumps out and starts running. I look at Jeffrey. Get out of that car and follow her. So I jump out of the car with our time card and timing chip. I sprint out of the tunnel to find the time control so we won't miss our check-in and get a penalty. Yeah, well, while he's running around Guanajuato, I'm stuck trying to figure out where the heck I am. I've got no navigator, no map, and I'm trying to find a finishing arch. The Volvo comes roaring out of the tunnel following this motorcycle. Apparently, the couple on the bike had helped Chris find his way back. I give them a team hat, thank them for their help, hop in the car, and we took off for the finishing arch. Crazy stuff like this happens uh, all the time in La Carrera. Can use up here. No, we're, we're beyond use up here. This is, this is actual need. Fatigue begins to set in. Del Volvo. Ah, qué hubo. Los ocho dos. ¿Cómo ves? Bien, ¿cómo Our está? hero. Aquí estábamos llegando. Es el héroe. Aquí está. El super una héroe. Una locura. Una locura, pero lo logramos, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿Cómo sí, me sí. dijiste? Tiene que ser ahorita, pero ahorita. No, lo, pero ahorita. No, lo la verdad es que yo entiendo lo que es esto, entonces soy muy fan de la Panamericana. Uh -huh. Y cuando me dijiste es que no hay mañana, es hoy. Uh -huh. Lo entendí. Cerramos el negocio y todos contra. Uh -huh. A buscarla, encontrarla y 
a darle. Y bueno, se logró, ya ves que también el chavo de la moto, qué barro, qué loco, o sea, Ahorita. en las carreras yo sé que un tornillo te detiene y un tornillo es la diferencia entre llegar y no. Y bueno, pues qué padre que le sirvió y qué padre que, que ya viene ahí corriendo. Estuvo padrísimo, pues este. One of the best parts of racing La Carrera is meeting the people of Mexico. At the start and finish of each stage, we meet hundreds of people who all wish us good luck. Buena suerte. We kicked butt in the morning, in a real way. Stages, speed stages one, two, three, and four. And then the day started to fall apart. We made some navigational errors. Places are pretty much squared away. Um, we're sitting in third place overall in our class, which was the result we were aiming for. Um, so now it's our responsibility to bring it home. turned out to be, when we look at the results over the days, while we had some wins, if you, the aggregate was, yeah, we're the third we're place the, car. We're the third car. Yeah. It's just, so, this is an honest, so it's a fair finish. It's, it's a fair finish. It's a fair finish. Um, and to come away with third place in the class, as competitive as ours, uh, feels really good. Feels like uh, the work, all the work. Next year, we'll be back and we'll win. Uh, Luis Santiago! Me too!
idea the first first part of that yeah keeping it on the road <laughs> what, what, what's your idea for how we could do that uh not getting lost in the basement <laughs> <laughs> so we keep it on the road and we don't get lost <laughs> easy peasy easy peasy <laughs> this year's Carreras required all the strength that my brother and i had i'm proud that we accomplished our goal of placing third in our class i am proud that we won mil cumbres two times and one stage five overall, proving that the Mescalero is fast enough to win. This race was harder than last year's. A couple of crashes, a couple of mistakes, it really tested me and Chris. But we're a strong team. We've got speed and we've got guts. Next year, we're coming back to win. That's the end of this year. One, right short, left one, right zero, and finish.